Hello, in this video I'll introduce the concept of specific latent heat and show you how to calculate it. Have you noticed that when water is boiling its temperature does not rise beyond 100 degrees Celsius? More energy is being added to the water but it's not getting any hotter, so where is this energy going? When a substance is changing phase from a solid to a liquid or from a liquid to a gas, energy is being used to break the bonds between the molecules. This energy is stored in the substance as potential energy, that is energy that might be released when the phase change is later reversed. This hidden heat is known as latent heat. This graph shows the temperature change of water as heat is applied to it. We start in the first part of the graph with solid water, ice. The ice is being heated and that is giving kinetic energy to the molecules. This is causing the temperature of the ice to increase. When the ice reaches zero degrees, the graph flattens because the temperature is no longer rising. The heat is still being added but it is no longer increasing the kinetic energy of the molecules. Instead, this energy is being converted into potential energy as the bonds separate. Finally, once all of the ice has melted into water, the kinetic energy and therefore the temperature con can continue to rise. This continues until the water reaches 100 degrees Celsius. At 100 degrees Celsius, the water begins to boil and the temperature stops rising the energy is now going into breaking the bonds to turn the liquid water into a gas, steam. So the potential energy is increasing, but the kinetic energy is constant. Finally, only once all of the water has been turned into steam, can the temperature rise continue and the steam gains kinetic energy and gets a higher temperature. We can calculate how much energy is needed for a substance to change state by using a value known as specific latent heat. Specific latent heat comes in two forms. Specific latent heat of fusion. This is the energy required to change the state of a substance from a solid to a liquid at constant temperature per unit mass. So this is the value that would tell you how much energy is needed to turn one kilogram of ice into one kilogram of water. And specific latent heat of vaporization. This is the energy needed to change the state of a substance from a liquid to a gas at constant temperature per unit mass. So this would be the energy required to turn one kilogram of water into one kilogram of steam without changing the temperature. The units of both forms of specific latent heat are joules per kilogram. For water, the specific latent heat of fusion is 3.34 multiplied by 10 to the power of 5 joules per kilogram. Whereas the specific latent heat of vaporization for water is equal to 2.27 times 10 to the power of 6 joules per kilogram. This tells you that it requires far more energy to boil water into steam than to melt ice into water. Also note that these values are much higher than the 4,200 joules per kilogram per Kelvin needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water by one degree. The energy needed can be calculated simply using the equation Q equals ML, where Q is the heat energy in joules, M is the mass in kilograms, and L is the specific latent heat either of fusion or vaporization in the units joules per kilogram. Let's try an example. Calculate the energy required to melt three kilograms of lead at a constant temperature. And we've been given the specific latent heat of fusion for lead as 23 kilojoules per kilogram. So let's start by writing out the equation Q equals ML, and this, in this case, it's the latent heat of fusion. And let's write out what we know. We know that the mass is three kilograms and that the latent heat of fusion is 23 times 10 to the power of three joules per kilogram in SI units. So we simply multiply those two numbers together. We get Q equals three times 23 times 10 to the power of three which is equal to 6.9 times 10 to the power of 4 joules. 
here's a slightly more difficult problem. Calculate the energy required to turn 10 kilograms of water at 80 degrees Celsius into steam. And we've been given the specific latent heat of vaporization and the specific heat capacity for water. We need to divide this problem into two parts. First, we need to work out the energy needed to raise the temperature of the water from 80 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. Then we need to work out the energy needed to turn that water into steam. So first, let's write out our equation Q1. So that's going to be the energy required to turn the 80 Celsius water to 100 Celsius water equals MC delta T. That's our specific heat capacity equation. Check out my specific heat capacity video to learn more about that. And let's write down what we know. We know M is 10 kilograms. And we know that delta T is equal to 100 Celsius, the boiling point of water, minus 80 Celsius, the starting temperature of the water. So we have a delta T of 20 degrees Celsius or 20 Kelvin. And we know the specific heat capacity of water already. So Q1 will be equal to 10 multiplied by 20 multiplied by 4200. And that will give us an answer of 8.4 times 10 to the power of 5 joules. Q2 will be the energy required to turn all of that 100 degree Celsius water into 100 degree Celsius steam. So for that we need the latent heat of vaporization equation. Q2 equals mLV. And our mass is still 10 kilograms. And LV 2.27 times 10 to the power of 6, which gives us an answer of 2.27 times 10 to the power of 7 joules. Finally, the total energy Q will be equal to Q1 plus Q2, so that's 8.4 times 10 to the 5 plus 2.27 times 10 to the 7, which gives us an answer of 2.35 times 10 to the power of 7 joules. Thank you for watching this video from Cowan Physics. If you found it useful, please like, subscribe and visit cowanphysics.com.